So you're big on sedation dentistry. Oh, absolutely. Our patients ask for it. I mean, the number of patients who are dental phobics, they can't even walk through the door without some type of premedication. So it's a great product, a great service that we're able to do. The IV goes in their arm. Sometimes we give them a pill so that they're relaxed. They don't even feel the IV. All their monitors are going to make sure they're healthy, that they're well controlled. So the breathing, the respiration, okay. the pulse, all of that is monitored, not by me. We have a staff just there for the anesthesia. So I want to do what I do best, which is the implant reconstruction. There's a team of people that are monitoring their breathing, their blood pressure, their pulse. They're completely safe and it's relaxed, it's comfortable. You listen to headphones as you drift off and you go to sleep, you wake up and it's a whole it's new done. you. It's now done. You say some people, they come in with no teeth, walk out with teeth and they don't even remember the procedure, like they lose track of time because of the sedation. Right. So there's something that we call milk of amnesia. Okay. It's actually a white liquid and it helps patients not even remember the sedation. I mean, it's great for YouTube videos and TikToks where they're like, wow, what happened? But it's amazing. They love not feeling a thing. They love the idea of going to sleep, not even be aware of the procedure. So it's amazing whether or not it's a more minor procedure or more involved procedure. We're very big on IV sedation. Now, what about medically compromised? Do you ever have to work with their medical doctor? Oh, absolutely. Like if somebody's in there, you say you've done 93 year old. Yeah. So in order to be boarded, as far as being able to be on our schedule, we check with the primary care physician. We make sure that there's, uh, if there's any need to talk with the cardiologist, a nephrologist, pulmonologist, okay. whatever ologist they've got, we're talking to them. Now, now, if since you have patients in their 80s and 90s doing this, statistically, they're on like three or four medications. Absolutely. Can they still do this? Oh, absolutely. So depending upon who put them on whatever blood thinners, sometimes we have them stop three days before, or five days before. There's certain tests that we have done. So yeah, the only issue is whether or not the medication may prevent them from having the procedure done, it's fairly rare. What about osteoporosis medications or type 2 diabetes medications? So the thing you that's work interesting. work with that all the time? Oh yeah, and here's the thing. When someone can't chew and eat a healthy diet and they have what I call a denture diet, you know, that's where they dip their food in, in the uh, coffee to make it soft. So a denture diet is soft, gummy foods. That's not healthy. So their okay. diabetes, of course, is off the chart because they can't eat healthy foods. They can't get fiber in their diet because they can't chew celery. They can't chew salads. So we get them to the point where teeth out, implants in, and all of a sudden, they actually have a better diet. They get healthier. Yeah, they have a better diet just with their temporary teeth. You know, the provisionals right after surgery. And, the in and that mouth infection goes away. Absolutely, say. because the source of the infection Infected gums and teeth are removed, and then they can start living a health. They get off more meds. All of a sudden, their primary care physician says to her patients, what'd you do? You don't need these drugs anymore. Well, I got a smaller smile, so now I don't need all this medication.